Hi, and we meet once again as we continue our series on 2 Corinthians. I hope you're doing well and encouraged. Uh, stay safe. And let's continue going through the scriptures as we thought. And we are in the book of 2 Corinthians. For those of you who are watching it for the first time, we have uh, covered verses 1 to 11. And this time we are going to start with verse 12 to 24. And here Paul is talking about, in 2 Corinthians, about his integrity. You know, when Paul was uh, writing to the Corinthians, it was a church full of trouble. And these people had many problems in the church. Uh, in his first trip to Corinth, Paul had planted the church in Corinth. And when he was writing 1 Corinthians, was his second trip there. And he says in that trip, he was very heavy hearted because to see what the condition of the church was, what people were doing, living in sin and all kinds of problems going around. He then Background of 2 Corinthians in this part is he wanted to go to Corinth, but decided not to. And because he decided not to go, you know, uh, people in Corinth began calling him and saying, you can't depend upon this man. You know, he's not dependable. He's in a way, you know, he's double minded. He sometimes says yes, sometimes says no. And they began to accuse him. But Paul, <laughs> and you will see that he mentions it later on. Paul says the reason why he could not come and. You know, many commentators believe and understand that that if he had gone there, his purpose was he would probably rebuke them and chastise them for the way they were living. And that was not the heart he wanted to show. But he was concerned about their faith. And you'll see that in verse 24 that Paul is saying, stand firm in the faith. You know, stand firm. That's, that is something that brings him joy. And uh, this is the question that we face today. How do I stand firm in faith? What are the things that require me to stand firm in faith? And in spite of all the criticism and negativity that Paul is facing in this time, Paul actually in these words gives us a few examples, a few things of how we can stand firm in our faith. You know, many times we think uh, standing firm in faith is my work. I have to do it. I have to stand firm in faith. I have to do something. But as believers, we know on our own, we can do nothing. We need God. And uh, this is the real purpose here. Paul is saying, listen, I did not want to come to you and rebuke you and chastise you. My heart towards you is pure. I'm your spiritual father and I want to be there. But the reason I say yes is because I mean yes. And I mean say no because I mean no. I have this integrity in my heart because I preach to you. And the idea is that Paul is saying that, listen, I am not someone who has no integrity. But I have integrity. If you look at the background, you will know. And uh, he's encouraging them at the same time, you know, also talking to them and letting them know that his authority that he has in Christ. And that's also what we need to learn, our authority in Christ, who we are. And one of the great things, the principles that we learn in the Bible is integrity. And if we have integrity, we should have integrity. It's a key, it's a key thing in the life of a believer to have integrity. And Paul talks about it here that I am not double minded. I am not someone who says yes, but means no and says no, but means yes. My yes is yes. My no is no, but I don't want to come. I didn't come for a reason. I didn't want to chastise you, but I want to stay to strength. So as you are strengthening your faith to be a partaker of your joy. Verse 24 reads like this. Not that we lord it over your faith. So he is he's saying, because I planted the church and I disciple you does not mean I want to lord my faith over you. But we are workers with you for your joy. He's concerned about their joy. For in your faith, you are standing firm. You are standing firm. And it's a beautiful portion of scripture. And, you know, as I was thinking, this verse was in the last verse, the last words. How do I stand firm in the faith? What are the things that help me? And you don't have to look far because they are found right in those verses in that passage that we are talking about. The first one is in verse 18. And in verse 18, it says, <clears throat> uh, but as God is faithful, our word to you is not yes and no. And the word is, we know this, uh, the word God, but God is faithful. The word is not, but God is faithful. In the original, it says, however, God faithful. The word is, is not there. The word as is not that as God is faithful. No, it says, but actually the word should be, however, 
God faithful. How do I, how can I stand firm in faith? Because I have a faithful God. That's how I stand firm in faith. And, you know, it's, it's, it's like we've heard this said that it's like a name that is God's name. God faithful, faithful God. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, it says, the one who has promised to us is faithful. God is faithful. In the first Thessalonians 5, 24, it says, the one who has called you is faithful and he will also do it. And so standing firm in faith, we are not alone. God is with us. A faithful God is with us. The one you can depend upon, the one you can have confidence in. He's faithful in forgiving sins. He's faithful. First John chapter 1, verse 9, when we confess, he's faithful and just. He is faithful to us in our tough days. He is faithful to us in our good days. He is faithful, always faithful. Wherever we are, whatever we may be doing, God remains faithful. And that's the reason why we can stand firm in faith is because God is faithful. But that's not all. In verse 19, he says, <clears throat> For the Son of God, Christ Jesus, who was preached among you by us, by me and Sylvanus, and Timothy was not yes and no, but yes in him. So here it's the son of God. The gospel, when it when the gospel was preached, many came to the faith. Many believed. And that's why they are in Christ today. And that's what Paul is trying to tell them. Listen, one of the things that we can stand firm in our faith is because Christ is in us. He is the hope of our glory. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. Christ in you, the hope of glory. How can I stand firm in faith? Because Christ is in us. John chapter 15, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. And it's true. Even standing firm in our faith is not our work. It's God's work. He helps us to stand firm in faith. Listen, faith is not something that we produce. God gives us the capacity to have faith. It's God's faith in us. And that's why Philippians chapter 4, Paul said that in verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So yes, on our own, we cannot do anything. So how do I stand firm in faith? Through Christ. He is in me, as yes, the hope of glory, Colossians chapter 1, 27. But also through him, I can do all things. It's beautiful the way the progression is happening here. God is faithful. Then there is Jesus Christ. And then look at verse 20. For as many as may be the promises of God in him, they are yes. Wherefore, also by him is our amen to the glory of God through us. So what helps me? Standing firm in faith, the promises of God. The word promise actually there means announcement, like God makes the announcement. We few days back, we had an announcement, 21 days lockdown. Then the government got into the mode of ensuring that we are in lockdown, right? <clears throat> Same way, when God makes a promise, it's an announcement that God is saying. Then who is it dependent upon to fulfill that? Who ensures that that will happen? God. And that's why we can be sure of God's promises. How can I stand firm in faith? Because God's promise. Listen, men, women, governments, everyone makes a promise, tries to enforce it. Sometimes people follow, sometimes they don't follow. But when God makes a promise, when God announces it, He is the one who will fulfill it also. And He says here in that word is Amen. You know, Amen is another name for Christ in Revelation 3.14. He is the Amen. So when I say amen to the promise, I say, so be it. Let it be as it is said. I'm also saying, because Christ is the one who's going to fulfill it, not me. And that gives me hope because I cannot fulfill promises of God. God fulfills the promise. It depends upon him. And he's a God who never changes, who is an everlasting God. He loves. And look at the scope of the promise. All his promises are yes and amen for the believer. All. Young, old, middle-aged, single, married, whatever you are, wherever you may be, you know, all his promises are yes and amen. There are so many promises, the whole scope. If you're growing in Christ, if you're a sinner who wants to come to Christ, if you're a sinner who's saved, you are weak in faith, you're strong in faith, you want, there's a purpose, you don't know what to do, there is fear, all those things, you know, backslidden, how do I get back, I'm tempted, how do I get deliverance? I have fear. How do, I get, how do I get rid of fear? There is a promise for everything. And, and I love that verse because it says, to the glory of God through us. So here's a beautiful thing. God announces a promise. Then he fulfills the promise. But he does it through us. So the glory goes to him. 
Like I love this. What am I supposed to do? Just stand there in faith apparently. I mean, I exercise my faith. I do what God has called me to do. But the result depends upon God. I am called to follow God. And the things that are written, I do them. It does not mean I just stand and say, okay, nothing's going to happen. And whatever God does, does. You know? No. We are called to walk by faith. So we walk. We believe. And we take the necessary steps that God has called us to. But the encouraging thing is this, God makes the announcement, God fulfills it through us, uses us to fulfill His promise so that the glory goes to Him. That's how I can be strong in faith, standing firm in my faith because there is promise of God. Then, <clears throat> the next verse, in verse 21, it says, Now He who establishes us with you in Christ and anointed us is God. So now, not only is God faithful, not only Christ is with us and in us, not only all his promises are yes and amen, but we are also anointed. In the Old Testament, <laughs> the anointing was for whom? The prophet, the priest and the king. What was it? What did it mean? When they were oil, they were poured with oil. It was a public proclamation saying what? The Holy Spirit has come upon this person for this office to fulfill it. That that is the proclamation. But in the New Testament, 1 John 2.20, all believers are anointed. What is anointing? Set apart for his use. Empowered by God. God empowers us. So when we believe, the moment we believed, we were saved. The moment we were saved, that very second, that very moment, the Holy Spirit came in and dwelt upon in us. And we became anointed. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon people. In the New Testament, he dwells in us. Greater is our privilege. How can I stand firm in faith? I'm anointed. I'm set apart by God for his use. You know, I'm set apart by God for his use. And that's why, that's how I can be firm in faith. And then finally, it says in verse 22, who has also sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a pledge. The Holy Spirit is in me. That's amazing. God is faithful. Jesus Christ is in me. All the promises of God are yes and amen for me. I am anointed, set apart by God to fulfill his purpose. But then also the Holy Spirit is given as a pledge. The word pledge, Arabon, is actually meaning down payment. When we, <coughs> sorry, when we go to buy a home or rent a home, or we look at the place, we may like it. But till the time I don't give a down payment, no one's interested. Why? Because that means I'm not serious about it. But the moment, the moment I give a down payment, it shows that I'm serious. I'm interested. Yes, that's what God is saying. The moment we believed, the Holy Spirit was given to us as a pledge. And all things that God has set, He has sealed us. And He's given the Holy Spirit to us as a pledge, as a down payment for surety. <clears throat> and once we are sealed by the Holy Spirit, no one can undo the seal. The world cannot undo it. The flesh cannot undo it. The devil cannot undo it. You know, we are sealed into the day of redemption till we see Christ face to face. Until our time is up, it's not up. Because we are sealed to the day of redemption. We'll be free when we see Christ. We are free today on the earth, but we'll be free when we see Him in heaven. And <clears throat> this is the guarantee. This is the pledge. This is the Arabon. This is the down payment. The Holy Spirit in our lives is the guarantee that what God has said, He means it. And he will do it. So be encouraged. How do I stand from in faith? Don't depend upon yourself on anything else. Depend upon God. Remember, he is faithful. Christ is in us. All the promises of God are yes and amen for us. We are anointed, set apart by Christ for his use, his purpose. And he will fulfill his purpose in us and through us so that the glory goes to him. And then the Holy Spirit is in us. The Trinity is for us. Heaven is on our side. So stay encouraged. Heaven is on our side. And this is amazing. How do I stand firm in faith? How can I be encouraged? Moment by moment, I know what goes on outside. And we have no control over it. But God is in charge. He is still on the throne. He has not moved from where he is. Where was God when Christ was on the cross? On his throne. He was in control. And he was winning Today also Christ is on the throne and he is in complete control of what goes on. Be encouraged in your faith. Stand firm. Faithful God is with you. Christ, our Savior, is with us. He is in us. 
all the promises of God. Focus on the promises. In these days, just pick up and say, Lord, I want, I want to go through at least five promises a day and think about them. Don't just read them. Think about them. I'm anointed God. You have set me apart for your purpose. I have a greater purpose on the earth. You have a greater purpose on the earth. It's not just normal living. You have a purpose. You've been set apart, anointed by God. And then the Holy Spirit is given to you as a pledge. And so we can all look at each other. We can all look at each other, call each other, encourage each other and say this, you know, what Paul said. We are workers with you for your joy. For in your faith, you are standing firm. I hope this word blessed you and we'll see you again with chapter 2 very soon. And every alternate day is what I plan to do it. Uh, Sunday evening, we'll have a message for you in the evening. And then we will again continue with the series. So have a blessed evening, have a blessed day and God bless you and stand firm in faith knowing that God is with you. Amen.